We're getting live set up. Come on in to Facebook. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Hey, Devin. Hello. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right, all right. Let's get see how we're doing on Facebook here. One second. <clears throat> Everybody have a good weekend. Oh, we miss you too, Pumpkin. That was cute. <laughs> I know, right? That was so cute. That was Jern, Miss Jern. Hey, Ernie. Ernie, I thought you were going to come in on Zoom. That's fine. <laughs> However you get there. Why don't you get here? Yeah, we love it. We like well, Alita Adams. In. Come on in. Come don't on in. Don't matter how you get here, just get here. So, um, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Um, and that's why we're praying people are still coming in on Facebook and uh, in the Zoom room. So just going to bow our head. Father God, Lord, we thank you. First of all, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this year, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. Yes. We thank you that you allowed us to start a new year where others um, didn't make it, Father Lord. And uh, we're praying for those that's going through the COVID, Father God. Yes. We're praying for those that are going through whatever trial or situation today, Lord, we just ask that you may comfort him, Father God. Let your word come forth, Father God. Hide Karen and I behind your cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, amen. Hello, Grace. Hey, Grace. And who we have over here? Bobby. And Bobby. Good to see you guys. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, there's Kels. And my girl, Kels. And hey, Sister Elder. Arlene. Come on in. Yes, well, you know, guys, we're really excited about this year and having the opportunity to um, do some work on our, our on our own ministry um, and, and to be able to continue the the work that we were doing on Bible study and all that kind of stuff. So we wanted to kind of tell you what is Broken Branches first. Um, Broken Branches is a Christian ministry for men and women who have life controlling problems that we unofficially started about 12 years ago. We began teaching a discipleship course uh, at our old church, and that ignited our passion for teaching others about God and how to grow in their relationship with God and to provide them with mental, social, and spiritual health services. So we, we exist to help others become more resilient, learn to develop coping skills, and begin to find a more meaningful life by first establishing a personal relationship with Christ and then making him the center of their life. So our goal is to introduce a new way of living by addressing self-esteem, family relationship issues, social issues, community relationships, um, addictions and work ethics by teaching skills and strategies. But this is first done guys by teaching biblical principles and how to apply them in in our lives um, to both the young and the old. And this is gonna help them become balanced mentally uh, and emotionally as well as strong spiritually. Hey CC and Leah. Hey y'all. Um, you know, Broken Branches in a nutshell is is really, um, for me, um, is, is we're all broken in some, in some part of our lives, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, I was broken uh, through validation as a young uh, man, not getting validation. I was broken through an addiction, mm -hmm. um, broken in marriages. But we all go through some some sort of brokenness mm -hmm. in stages of our lives, whether it's a childhood, whether it's a teenage, whether you're an adult, right? So we're all broken. But really broken branches, you know, that's accomplished through, like Karen said, counseling. Um, we do daily devotions on here that are posts on, that are post on broken branches, I shouldn't say daily, but maybe once or every other day, yeah. you know, because it takes a lot of time to write those. Uh, we have a podcast coming soon. And a devotional. And then on Tuesday night, we'll have a live panel where we'll talk about things like blended families or mm -hmm. we'll talk about um, uh, why I can't keep a man or uh, just subjects that are uh, the digital era or what's going on now. You know, yeah. what is canine when it's repair when it's repair? When it's relating to God, mm -hmm. you know, just subjects that people don't dare to talk about or tackle. Other you know? stuff like, you know, daddy's not there. We uh, have a 
I got yeah a class like daddy's daddy's um I call it DNA Dad dad's mm-hmm. not around you know can't you get it DNA yeah. dad's not around so uh, just a lot of things uh, talking about marriages that are on life support um how do I how do I find my how do I find my husband or how do I find my my um wife mm-hmm. you know and so, also another thing t- talking about taboo subjects like um. I'm depressed, but shouldn't God be enough? Right. You know, so stuff like where people really struggle, real stuff where people can can um, question their their walk with God because they're having some issues. Well, Karen, you know, it's like a lot of people go through anxiety. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people go through depression. Some of the things that, you know, you deal with on a daily basis mm-hmm. with uh, uh, just being a therapist, mm-hmm. you know, and just really just talking about that on Tuesday nights and um, we just kind of scratching the service and maybe if you need our service, we offer, them, mm-hmm. you know, but it's things that we're going to talk about and things, little hints and uh, little uh, nuggets that we can give you. Yeah. So, so we, we do provide mentorship virtual and in person. Um, we do certified life coaching services and um, licensed therapy. So we try to, we're trying to have a holistic approach to helping people heal and with the foundation being the the word of God. Hi, Tammy Crow. I know her. <laughs> hey, Tammy. But the mission really of Broken Branches is to significantly improve the mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being of others by first introducing men and women to Christ, all right, mm-hmm. and making God the center of their life and helping them grow as Christians. And we believe men and women can be in power and be set free from bondage and strongholds that keep them from living, uh, that, well, that keep them to live a purpose-driven life, mm-hmm. you know? So some of these are some of the things that we believe in. So tonight, you know, beginning that we're starting the new year, um, before we move on to our Bible discussion tonight, we wanted to know if there were any questions that you guys may have, you know, on what we do or our services or what we may provide for you. Um, is there anything that um, that we can answer if you don't have a lot, if you don't have clarity to it? And another thing we want to add, um, along with any questions, we also want to uh, open up for any type of topics that you may be interested in uh, discussing on on our our time together so that we can delve into that as well. Somebody had a, I heard a speaker. Oh, they just came in. Hey, Ambassador Sandra. And so, uh, so yeah. Thank you. So if there's any like topics that you guys may want to talk about or anything that you want a little bit more uh, knowledge or be a little bit more knowledgeable or or how can you cope with something better, you know, just please feel free to, um, I see Cece says, Cece says, how do we go about with the life coaching and mentorship? Okay. And we can give you some more information on that one, Cece. Afterwards, I'll make a note. Okay. And that's basically, you can, um... You can reach out um, to us on our Facebook page, and we can give you some more information about that. Um, so, but well, let's just mm-hmm. you know, Kira, let's you know, let's talk about you know, it's one thing to say, it's another thing to say we have results. Okay. Because you know, we we've um, we will begin to put a lot of testimonies on here from mm-hmm. people that we've worked with, from uh, from therapy to life coaching. Uh, Man, we got some great test. We got yeah. some great testimonies of how people have um, gotten over. I remember Karen one time, maybe ten, eleven years ago, how we started Master Life, and the first thing we heard was a lady who um, shared that she sh- that she saw her husband mm-hmm. shoot himself uh, in the back of the head, mm-hmm. and that was that was devastating, mm-hmm. you know. And and we were able to walk her through healing, through um, not only the grief but the trauma of all of that. And it was, you know, from beginning with the word of God. Right. So that's the that's the piece that's really good. So so if you can drop in here whatever questions you may have and topics that we can um, touch on that we may not have already planned, we would love to make sure that we're addressing the things that you're interested in as well. But now what we're going to dig, dig into now is we're going to talk about who is God, you know? This is who we know God to be through time. We know Colossians 1 and 16 tells us that all things were created by God in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created 
um, through him and for him. Now, let me put a, let me mm -hmm. throw another little scripture in there. It's in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, which is the faith base mm -hmm. about who Christ is and how God framed the world out of um, him calling it out, calling those things if there were not. So um, that's a good chapter to read to him, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. So. And then another one, um, if we go to Revelations uh, 22, uh, chapter 22, verse 13, it tells us that God is the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So he was here before it started and he'll be here when it all ends. Well, John 4 and 24, one of my scriptures I like, it tells us that God is the spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And that's such a powerful, uh, uh, that is such a powerful uh, scripture right there that God is a spirit. You know, God is not a man. You right. know what I mean? And so a lot of times, especially in the millennium, we get that little confused. But God is a spirit. And so how do we worship God in spirit and in truth? Mm -hmm. You know, so these are some of the things that we don't talk about tonight. Yeah. And then Exodus 3 and 14 tells us that God is I am. He's whatever we need him to be. He can encompass, you know, he's all encompassing of what we need. Mm -hmm. I am who I am. I am. You can who be I whatever am. he wants to be. He's omnipresent, omni, uh, <laughs> omniscient. You know, yeah. all powerful, all knowing. You know? And speaking of omnipresent, it takes us to Joshua one and, and nine, mm -hmm. and that shows us that God is wherever we need, wherever we go. He said he'll never leave us. So God wants us to know who he is, so that when we're when trouble comes, guys, and when the world changes as it is today. We are solid in our beliefs and we can stand strong. Hey, Jeff. I just got to say hello to my boy there. We're going to get a lot of men on here. I'm looking forward Yay, to that I this year. <laughs> we got a lot of men on here. So what's up, Jeff? Awesome. All right. Um, go ahead, Karen. So as we go on, if we look in uh, Matthew chapter 16, verses um, 13 to, through 19, and I'll have the um, handout. We usually give a handout every week with the scriptures. And so didn't have it today, but we'll have it, have it for you next week. But in Matthew 16, um, verses 13 through 19, it says when, when Jesus came to Philippi, he asked the, his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, what do you say? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So here, Jesus asked, you know, who do you say I am? He asked, what are the people in the street saying? He wanted to hear what who, who they were calling him. But then he also wanted to know who did Peter think he was? Well, see, that's a trick question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to chop it up like this in my book. Um, I think it's, you know, Jesus has a sense of humor. It's a lot of times like after um, the resurrection, you remember one time when he was uh, walking with the two guys outside the city mm -hmm. and they were really um, sad, you know, and Jesus like, you know, what's going on with you guys? And, and uh, he was walking with them. And they was like, basically, you dummy, you don't know what's been happening the last three days about Christ of Nazareth, mm -hmm. Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus knew, mm -hmm. you know, but Jesus has a sense of humor. And so um, when I see this question right here, he says, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. Right. I, Jesus knew who he was, but Jesus was trying to see if they knew who he was, mm -hmm. you know, if they could identify here, they have been walking with Christ. And then one of the disciples says, some says you're Isaiah, the mm -hmm. prophet of uh, Elijah. And so, you know, let's just open this discussion up here real quick. Who do you say Christ is, mm. especially today? Who is? Who is Christ to who you? Who is God? Yeah, who you is know? God? Um, you know, a lot of times when... Uh, before you all answer that, 
I want you to understand that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and those that are, were the religious leaders at that time, they knew who Christ was, mm -hmm. right? They knew who Christ was, but they wouldn't acknowledge who Christ was because they, if you can remember, um, let me get it right. Um, they, well, back in that time in that jurisdiction, Jesus was kind of like a rock star mm -hmm. here. And he carried so much weight with him and so many people that was a crowd that he caused a disturbance. Mm -hmm. And one of the things of the Roman that, that were to govern those people, that was against the ordinance, mm -hmm. right? And so Jesus had all these people guessing like that here comes the Messiah. And some say he's not the Messiah. And so he was making uh, a kind of a, a, what's the word I'm looking, a chaos with mm -hmm. everyone. And so even to the point to where I think it's, I can't pronounce his name, Saifus. Mm -hmm. He said this. He said, it's better for one to die mm -hmm. than for all of us to die. He kind of prophesied that. You know, because the Bible talks about Jesus died for all of our sin. And so at that time, they just didn't want to acknowledge because they didn't want to lose the power. You remember, mm -hmm. Jesus says, do as they say. No. Yeah. Do as they do as they tell you to do. But do, don't do what they do, what they do. You know, mm -hmm. kind of like so, our parents. I wonder if that's what they got. it. So, from. yeah. So. <laughs> so who is Christ? Mm -hmm. That's a, let's open that up. Who is God? Who is God to you? So Bobby, Bobby says over on Facebook that my comforter, father, my friend. All right. Mm hmm. Miss Jennifer. I remember her this is this is interactive. This is, you know, turn those mics off and yes. unmute them and let's let's talk. Let's, and let's talk engage. for a minute. Who is God? Hmm. Anybody. Especially. God in the... is our... Yes. God is our creator. He's yes. a supreme being. That's it. Okay. He was he's the he 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 was here before it all started and he'll be here when it all ends, right? A absolutely. He's also the object of our faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey Jennifer. Hey. <laughs> so uh I would say that I think to me God is actually my foundation. Mm -hmm. I think um he uh he's there when I need somebody. Mm -hmm. He's a comforter. He mm -hmm. creates an avenue for me to know that I have grace, but also understand that there that I always have faith mm -hmm. and strength to keep going. Mm -hmm. So he's our rock. Yeah, That's I gotta, what I heard you say. I, I got to say hello to my men because they come in here. John, what's up, John? Marshall's excited. Mr. Jukis. So we have Chrissy said that he's the way, the only way. Hey, sis. And Hattie says, my protector, joy, mm -hmm. hope, peace, our provider, father, friend. Oh, I get happy just, just going through the list of who mm -hmm. he is. Mm -hmm. um, he's a rock star. He, Jesus was sort of a reluctant rock star. He was powerful mm -hmm. and charismatic. That's it. Wonderful counselor. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Come on now, y'all. Prince of yeah. peace. Mm -hmm. He's all knowing. My guid guidance and that small yet strong voice in the stillness come on that's it anybody else that is god well you just you already said it but i would like to say that he is my rock he's my everything without him i could not function mm. yes can i can let me break this down a little bit more karen mm -hmm. i know who god is you know, let's, you know for me god is um he's my healer mm -hmm. yeah. um he's my uh, protector He's my provider. And I named those three things because that's how I had my encounter with God. See, I had an encounter with mm -hmm. God going through a kidney transplant that I couldn't buy a kidney. Mm -hmm. No one could um, give me a kidney. And I had to trust in God to bless me with a kidney. Mm -hmm. So he was my healer. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say he's my deliverer, I say he's my deliverer because I had a encounter with uh a drugs, addiction, and only God, only mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. helped me to have faith in myself that I could turn that situation around and I got healed through it. Mm -hmm. When I say he's my provider, mm -hmm. he's my provider because every day, um, mm, it's just like the Holy, the, the prayer says that, um, Thank, what's it? Uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he's my daily bread. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't, I can eat food all day long. I can eat um, regular food, but my spiritual food, he's my daily bread. Mm-hmm. You know, he strengthens me, mm-hmm. you know? And so when I, that question is personal to me and that's what we're kind of trying to make you kind of understand. See, there's a lot of people that know of God. Right. Mm-hmm. But do you have a relationship and have you had mm-hmm. an encounter with God? You know, mm-hmm. to no one can say that, you, you know, I know God for who he for is myself. for myself, mm-hmm. not because you tell me that there is mm-hmm. a God. I've had a blind Bartimaeus experience with mm-hmm. God. I have had a um, the lady crawling in the crowd, you mm-hmm. know, that was bleeding for, for uh, 12 years. I've had that type of experience mm-hmm. with God. So I know that that's my God. Mm-hmm. And that's what Devin says over in, in, um, t- in the chat. She says, he is all I need to walk this walk. We know who he is when he have when we have encounters with him. And that's as, it's kind of one of those things, you know, the old folks used to say, and I still tell my kids sometimes, I'm like, live a little longer, you know, have a little bit more history of, of a testimony of how God has brought you through something. And then you will understand our excitement and our love and our joy about, about who God is and what he, what he does because of where he's brought us from, you know, us looking back and those memories is what strengthens us, mm-hmm. you know, for today right? and knowing, giving us faith that whatever we go through today that we will get through because of what he's already done for us. Right. So it's those encounters. Yes, yes, yes. And that's good. That's some, that's good discussion. You know, um, I'm a history buff. Yeah. And one of the things that I like to always do in order to understand the Bible, you really have to understand what's going on with the history, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's no different than today, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if, if we say God is the same today and yesterday and forevermore, he doesn't change, right? Right. See, I believe God used different methods to reel us in into salvation, you know, mm-hmm. um, but he never changes, mm-hmm. right? He never changes. So... Let's let's just take a stroll throughout uh history. History, right? Mm-hmm. Let's take a you know, we had the um oh my god, let me think about it here. I'm gonna just start with the agricultural period in mm-hmm. America, right? And you know, um through the agricultural period, that's like in the sixteen hundreds or somewhere mm-hmm. around there, and how they um needed humans to produce, you know, uh more labor, you know. Um, for the crops mm-hmm. that was going on, right? And so if you look in that period, man, you'll see there's a period in the colonial period, right? And how we as our forefathers had um, embraced that period, we saw where a lot of people had used God for slavery, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We saw how that it was okay because, you know, to justify, to justify that. Mm-hmm. And then if we go up to the industrial period, which mm-hmm. comes next, because that kind of wiped out the agriculture uh, you know, period through the Industrial Revolution because mm-hmm. it transformed econ- it transformed economies uh, that had been based on agriculture, and more cities were created and developed. Right, mm-hmm. so you saw the new machines coming in. You saw the um, this you know just new ways of organizing work and mm-hmm. um, different factories existing uh, existing, <laughs> and uh, you saw things being more productive and yeah. efficient, you know? And then, so you go up to the informational age, right, Karen? Mm-hmm. And then this is a period in history to where it characterized by the shift yeah. from the industrial production to one of the, uh, to information, mm-hmm. you know, being more informative in society. Mm-hmm. And so the computer, yeah, mm-hmm. the computers come. So it, it made things um, easy and accessible, you know? And, and and the knowledge that it would take us years to get, bam, we could get it just like that, mm-hmm. you know. And so so when you look at it and you put it all together, men have really evolved, mm-hmm. you know, from the Stone Age, from the Iron Age, to the Middle Ages, to the Industrial Age, to what we call today the Electronic Age mm-hmm. or the Digital Age. We have evolved and we have changed, mm-hmm. but has God changed? Mm. No, he hasn't. Has God changed? Now, now I don't have my phone, but I would almost dare someone to ask Siri 
or Alexis. We did this today. Yeah, can you do that? Someone say, who is God? Yeah, on your phone, someone on, if you can. someone on Zoom, if you can un, I know, um, I know you unmute can. yourself and then ask Siri, who is God? You know, we had to do that like three or four times today. And then I would ask questions like, who is the Holy Spirit? You know, and some of the questions that it gave, you know. I asked my Siri and it said it can't complete my request. <laughs> Whoa. All right. So ask, ask Siri, who is, who is the Holy Spirit? Hey, Siri. Who is the Holy Spirit? You have two contacts named Holy Spirit. <laughs> Tap the phone number for what you'd like to see. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is what. It's a good, it's that's a good a point. Crazy, don't you think? Yes, and that's the point I'm trying to make here is mm -hmm. that we're going into an age. We're, we're having a change in the atmosphere. There's a mm -hmm. shifting that's going on. Just like I was just talking about those five different stages in life, you know, where we all have all had to shift. Mm -hmm. We have to shift. We have to uh, be flexible mm -hmm. and just, well, we've never been in an, an era to where we're into um, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and stuff like that to where um, we can ask Siri or Alexis who the Holy Spirit is and they can attempt to tell us, mm -hmm. you know, because I might need a word from God. Yeah. Can can Siri, Alexis, give me a Holy Spirit? <laughs> I mean, can they give me a word from God? And this is where I think that we're going. And this is the shifts, especially if you have younger children and grandchildren, mm -hmm. because we're in an era to where, you know, those that are over 30 are a little older. We're in an era to where we know where we grew up. Um, whether it was in church or whether it was uh, with the Bible or, mm -hmm. or whatever it may be, but we had to, we had to get that information for ourselves. Yeah, because you know, remember we had to go to the library, we had to go open up the 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 card um, catalog, we had to f go through and find several references, go and go to the bookshelves and find the books, and and all of that to get the book, and then we had to sit down and go through the book. And find the things that we wanted to pull out, you know, if we're doing a research paper. But now we can just ask Siri. And this uh, is Alexa. When we I bring this up because this is why it's so important to know who is God. You have to know God for yourself. You know, I don't think Siri or anybody else can download mm -hmm. revelation from God. You know, I need to know God for myself. Mm -hmm. I need to hear God. I need to feel God. I need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and teach you of all things that are yet to come. Mm -hmm. So I don't need fake news. <laughs> you know, I need the real deal. You understand what I That's mean? That's exactly what it is. Cause you know, when we talk about fake news, it's, it's um, propaganda. People can put out a message just like we talked about, you know, how um, the Bible was distorted or, and um, distorted in order to get someone's opinion over so it's important that we have to know this word for ourselves and it's not the word that we knew from our parents it's not the god of our parents it's in the god of our parents experience but it's the god of our experience and that's why it's so important um that we're starting even uh with with you know our bible studies is talking about who is god and showing how the importance of you have to know that you know, that you know for your own self. Hey, Jessica. And, see, and the thing is, too, with that, Karen, is like the Bible always says the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac, and I'm the God of Jacob. That never changes. You know, he always says that. But who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. You see, what's your experience? What's your encounter? Who do you say that I am? As he said to um, the disciples, because if you don't know him, then people can put a label on you. Mm -hmm. you you know, you you tend more to your follower because you don't know who Christ is. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so you'll listen um, to some of the wrong agenda or the propaganda, but you have to know Christ for yourself. Mm -hmm. And the best way to know him, it's just like a girlfriend. It's like before I married Karen. Um, I had to date her. And and then I, had, then I married her. But a lot of times we date God but we don't marry him. <laughs> mm. What do you mean by that? That's well, I mean, good. I mean that we'll go to church. We'll mm -hmm. say that there is a God. Yeah. Um. We'll say we'll say our little candy prayers. You mm -hmm. know, thank you, God. But what we won't do is 
we won't date them. You know, we won't live the lifestyle mm-hmm. of Christ or we don't attempt to live the lifestyle of Christ. We take him for granted. You know, we don't surrender it all to him. Mm-hmm. We don't give him our whole heart. We, mm-hmm. we, we got one foot in, as I've been told, mm-hmm. and, and, and we're straddling the fence. Mm-hmm. You see, you know what I call it? Yeah. We're pimping God. Mm. We're we're pimping God. We want God to show up and give us what we want Him to give us when we want Him when we want Him to give it to us. But we're not willing to sacrifice anything. Well, y'all, I like to put it how y'all put it today on Facebook. You know, y'all say y'all, especially when you date a woman. You know, I hear y'all say this. Y'all say, say uh, no, not you, but I'm just saying y'all. some of the single women out here. I hear y'all say, well. Well, you know, um, he wants some benefits. What's it called? Oh. Extra benefits without being married. What yeah. it called? What's Friends it called? with benefits. Friends with benefits. Yeah. There you go. There Friends you with go. benefits. And that's how we do God sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, we want access to him. Mm-hmm. Completely access to him. But we don't get those benefits unless we're all in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying because the Bible does say that the Lord. Um, mm, oh, God. What's that scripture? It says this. It says that the goodness of the Lord leads men into repentance. Mm-hmm. So he can be so good to you sometimes and you wonder, man, you know, there must be a God mm-hmm. that will lead you to repent. Right. Yeah. And so, um, but that's what we do sometimes with God. We want, we want the, we want the benefits, mm-hmm. you know, the blessings without submission. Hattie yes. Says. There you go, Hattie. Thank the you for helping out your boy. Without submission. And that's, um, that's some deep stuff. So let's, let's talk about, and, um, you know, Jessica, you know, I'm going to pull at you. Angel, I'm going to pull at you. Let's talk about what are some things that hinder us from giving God our whole hearts? Because it's a, it's the, it's a beginning of a new year, right? And we have, um, you know, we want to, if we go about doing the same thing, the same way, we're going to get the same results. So we want to really have some self-evaluation so that we can set ourselves up not only for success because that success is, you know, again, pimping God, but successful relationship with God, you know? Well, I, she's, Patty said pride. It's like this. Mm. Every year I see people make New Year's resolution. I'm going to do this. I'm going to lose weight, blah, blah, blah. They're always making a commitment, mm-hmm. right? Um, I often say, you can write this one down. Okay. I said every every year, people are always making New Year's resolutions. And so and by the April or May we lose it. You know, mm-hmm. we don't we don't stay committed to it. February or March. You know. <laughs> but here's the thing about here's the thing about it. You know, I often say that whatever you commit to, you become. Mm. If you commit to it, you will become it. People go to school. You know, it's not amazing that they'll come out to be doctors or lawyers. Is that's what they went to school. They mm-hmm. went there to be knowledgeable. And so, of course, they're a lawyer. Mm-hmm. They're a doctor or mm-hmm. they're a therapist or whatever that may be. It's all because they committed to it. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, with God, we don't we don't completely commit to God. Mm-hmm. We don't completely surrender to God. We and I'm I'm saying this because I'm a witness to this. Mm-hmm. I do this. We want what we want from God sometimes, but we don't want to surrender it all to him. But yet we still want some of the benefits. Mm. Okay. So, so Jessica had some good stuff over there. She said the betrayal feeling like God let you down. So that's some real stuff, you know? So if you pray before and ask God for something and, and God said, no, you know, we had a class, um, uh, last year we talked about what do you do when God says no? Mm-hmm. You know, let me let me say this to you. Uh, a lot of times when God does say no, he's operating behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And even if God, God doesn't always tell you um, what's the word? God doesn't always tell you what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's many biblical stories in the Bible to where God said no. I think about when David, he was on he was um, after he had an affair with Bathsheba. And he committed his adultery. He was on the ground. He was praying. He was mm-hmm. fasting. And he was asking God to save that child's life. Mm-hmm. And God said no. Mm-hmm. And so what do you do when God says no? You have to accept that. And then you have to ask God for... He, 
<laughs> how can I say this? The Bible says that his thoughts, Deuteronomy 30 and 30, he says his thoughts are his thoughts and my ways are my ways. So a lot of times we want, we live in a society to now, we think that we're supposed to get explained, an explanation for everything, mm -hmm. but that doesn't happen with God. Mm -hmm. God says, I give mercy to who I want, to who I want to show mercy. But because we live in a society today, we think that he owes us an explanation mm -hmm. why he said no or why he didn't open up a door. Mm -hmm. But that comes with the maturity of knowing Christ and accepting Christ is who he is. Anybody mm -hmm. want to comment on that? Well, you know, um, Andrea said, Andrea said in chat, she said, hurt people hurt people. So we tend to hurt ourselves by not committing our whole hearts. That's right. And, and hurting ourselves and not even knowing that we're hurting ourselves. Well, let's put that in context to God, though, mm -hmm. what she just said. It's very true with people. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that if I, if, can I, can I be the devil's advocate for a minute and say, well, God, you hurt me. And that's why you took my mom away from me. Um, you, you know, whatever devastate, whatever was so devastating that you couldn't accept. Because I hear a lot of people say that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just don't want to be all in with God. I believe that there's a God. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just don't think, why would God, why would God uh, not show love? Mm -hmm. You know, or why would God take a baby or why would God take my mom or my husband? Mm -hmm. You know, he's supposed to be a God of love, of hope mm -hmm. and of faith. Mm -hmm. So, Andrea, do you want to expound on what you were saying or what you were meaning? Yes. Yep, that's good. That was good, Nikki. You know, just comment on that. You know, when God calls us to what you just said, that's why God calls us something. He he asks us to separate ourselves. Mm -hmm. When we when we start when we start getting mature in Christ, there's some friends that are gonna fall by the wayside, you know. And then the other part to that, what she was saying, yes, God tells us not to cast our pearls mm -hmm. in front of swine. Everybody is not going to be receptive to what you say. Pastor Levi has a way of putting it like this. You know, I may not be for you, mm -hmm. but somebody else may be for you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. That is okay. You know, I'm not assigned to you, mm -hmm. but you can be a people pleaser. But please, Angel, comment. Um, I was just going to, a couple of things, actually. Karen, you guys asked who is God. God is creator of heaven and earth. He's the one 
and only true in the eye. Mm -hmm. And God is everything to you that you need. He will mm -hmm. be a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. He is a gap filler. He's a void filler. He's your friend. He also chastises you and sometimes make you feel like, you know, God, you mad at me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. But That's good. Nurture. He's everything that you need him to be. And more so, he tends to meet every individual where they are. Yes. Where they are. And the way we please them is through faith. Mm -hmm. So you can't have, you, you have to have faith in order to really activate all of your blessings in God's, for the God have for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. You know, and having faith in him, sometimes his, 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 uh, plans is quite different. As for myself, Karen and Marshall know my story. Um, mm -hmm. I lost, I have two children. I lost my husband and I lost my mother and my dad all within a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I had to just, I was very angry, so I can relate to the other um, lady when she was speaking. I was extremely angry and disappointed with God, could not understand why he would allow that. Mm -hmm. But here it is. When one build and have a relationship with God. Yes. That is what he desires. Mm -hmm. He wants you to want him more than anything else, anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything. He wants all of you because God is a jealous God. Yes. So therefore, I think that building your relationship, getting to know him for who he is, getting to know the mysteries of God, mm -hmm. understanding what he wants from us, mm -hmm. understanding what love is and and just like the young lady said, she just want to invite everybody, everybody mm -hmm. because she done been bit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? When you done been bit by the Holy Ghost, and when you done, it's like, you know, women, we have, you know, when there's a great sale, we want to tell everybody. <laughs> yeah. But when you experience, and I'm talking about true experience mm -hmm. with God, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a love relationship, but it all starts with faith. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's, it's a love relationship. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's it. That, that's <laughs> that's good. You know, that is, that's real good. And it starts, it's, it's a love relationship and it's a commitment. And it, that's what the faith comes in. It's a commitment. We have a covenant. He made a covenant with us. That's a, that's an agreement that he will not break. He's not going to break his covenant. We break our covenant with him and we come back and forth, but he's always there waiting for us. Um, John says, uh, over on Facebook that it starts with each one of us. Remember, every single human being, no matter how much the image of God is marred by sin or illness or weakness or age or any other disability, still has the status of being in God's image. Oh, that's good. And therefore must be treated with the dignity and respect that is due to God's image bearer. That's some good stuff right there. You know, I'm, I want to piggyback on... Uh a lot what Angel was saying, mm -hmm. especially I was thinking about she was speaking mm -hmm. and she said, it's a love relationship. Uh, and then I saw a comment earlier. It says, does God put us through pain? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I thought about um, Hebrews chapter 12 is the chapter to where God talks about. He said, if he loves us, he'll chastise us. Right. And it's, and, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like you have, if you have children, right. Um, You'll get to a point to where you'll give your children grace, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's that one thing that they do where we get that spanking, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, I told you, I told you. And so, which made me think about God is a God of chastisement. And mm -hmm. if you read that chapter, it says that the suffering doesn't feel good at first, mm -hmm. but it's going to take you through a change so that mm -hmm. you can draw closer mm -hmm. to him. And um, the other thing that came to me is when she was talking about, oh, I think it's, I, what came to my mind was obedience and mm -hmm. sacrifice. Yeah. So as you get to know God and as you walk with God, because God does things in stages. Mm -hmm. He says that he orders our footsteps, right? Mm -hmm. You'll take a step and you'll, then you'll get another order. But through that footsteps that he orders, that's where the discipline comes in. Mm -hmm. That's where the gymnasium comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say that when we get saved, God puts us in his gym to yeah. work us, to strengthen us, right? And, and it's so, painful at first. And, and you don't, you don't get muscles if you don't go through a resistance. Mm -hmm. There's the resistance on the bar that you're pushing up mm -hmm. that builds the muscles. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the chastisement comes mm -hmm. in. But let me go a little bit more deeper with um, Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham had one son, mm. one, one that he longed for, that took him 
hundred uh, years again. <laughs> you know, a hundred years, one. And God says to Abraham, I need you to sacrifice him. I need you to sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. I know it had to run through Abraham's mind. Why would a God that I love mm -hmm. ask me to sacrifice my son? Mm -hmm. I mean, why would he, why would he do that? But the thing that's so amazing about the story is that I remember that they went with a, um, I was call him a servant. Yeah. And he told the servant, he said, mm -hmm. me and the boy will be back. We'll be back. Mm hmm so he knew whatever was going to happen that God was going to, if he, was, if he had to kill him, that God would put bring it back mm -hmm. in him. That's where I want to get. But people don't understand that when you grow with God, it's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He's asking you to sacrifice something that's going to, I think, I think God, we have a way of, especially in this day, we have idols, mm -hmm. we have phones, we mm -hmm. have um, things media. we love, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes God's like, I need you to cut all that out. If you're going mm -hmm. to hear me, what are you willing to sacrifice to draw closer to you? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing God gave me late last night. And I, I, I meant to say this earlier. We're always asking for God to change our situation. Mm -hmm. We are always asking for God to change our situation. And God told me last night, he says, Marshall, it ain't so much changing your situation. I need you to change. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because we'll pray, God, can you change this? Can you change that? And God mm -hmm. says, I need you to change. Because I know if you change, you'll change your situation. That's it. See, a lot of times we ask God to do things for us, but God knows that we can do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because we're, what the word says, we can do all things, things through Christ. And then when I'm weak, he's, he's strong. strong. Mm -hmm. So we get it twisted a little bit. Mm -hmm. We think God, we don't want to do our part. Lord, 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 Lord. But you have a part that you have to play. Mm -hmm. See, there's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. There's an obedience. This is what we're going into the new year. Mm -hmm. There's a sacrifice. There's an obedience. And there's a courage, Joshua. Be mm -hmm. strong and mm -hmm. of good courage. Mm -hmm. I know you just went through the COVID. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people just died. I know um, it was just right at your house, at your children's school. But I need you to be strong. Mm -hmm. See, you got to hear God for yourself. Yeah, that's good. And you got to call those things that you were not. Mm -hmm. See, it's one thing to say that there is a God, but there's another thing to get in the word of God. For the word of God is what, Karen? Living, active, active sharper, sharper than any double-edged sword. Even to piercing the bones oh, and the marrow, marrow of your soul. Ooh. So what does that mean? So, so like, let's God. just talk about that. So what does it mean when it says that the word of God can pierce you to your bone? That's what that scripture is saying. What does that mean to you? Hmm. Um, I want, can I? Yes. I, I want to and I shared this on RTK Inner Circle, but um, I faced this recently where I had to really come face to face with my faith mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the word of God piercing my soul. Um, I, many of you know I lost a daughter six years ago at a third trimester, and it was devastating to me because God said no to me. I, I was not allowed to have more children. I have two older children. And when I finally healed and I really praised God through that storm, I found that I was going to be a grandmother. And that was the joy of my heart. Uh, I, was, I, I was looking forward to this new covenant with God that God gave me a promise. And only to receive a phone call from my son saying that, my grandson was going to be stillborn, mm -hmm. and I, I asked all my prayer warriors. I pleaded with God to the depths of my soul, in my, on my hands and knees, just asking God, please don't let it be cruel. So make a miracle. Um, I believed the miracle, and it wasn't so. Mm -hmm. And only to have my son, and in that, that moment, God was mm. so evident because mm. I was strong. I wasn't falling apart as I thought I would. Wow. And then for my son, 
face she had to go through the whole birth. Mm. And I had to be the anchor of strength. I was the only one that was safe. safe. Mm. And I couldn't fall apart. So my son, my pain was worth seeing my son go through his first son, mm. who was 31 weeks. He was so excited mm. only to be born, unborn. And please, why is this happening? And seeing that hurt, and I can't take it out. But then after my grandson was born, for my son to say, Mommy, if they call a priest or anyone, I don't want no one. I want you mm. to baptize him. I want wow. you to dedicate him. Mm. And I had to stand there. Mm. And that's where I saw grace and mercy. Mm. That's where I knew that God's words was piercing my soul. Mm. Because I held first grandson, the promise mm. that I felt God gave me. Mm. And I had to give him back to the Lord. Mm. And although it was humanly painful, it was yet the most beautiful gift God could ever mm. give me. Because mm. at that moment, it was me and God. And I said, I know I have to give what I wanted so much, mm -hmm. but I have to trust you. Mm. I have to know that you mm. are greater than, that you know all. Mm. And my faith put the test of time at mm. that moment. And those are when God's words pierce your soul. Mm. Because I saw grace and mercy. I saw death in the face, mm. but I also saw God. Mm. Mm. Man, that's so powerful. Yeah. Oh, Jessica. Mm. That's my question. Mm -hmm. So that drew you closer to God. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, mm -hmm. The test is not going to take you out. See, that's a lot of times we think that the test is going to take us out, but the test will strengthen us and we come out even more on fire and in a position. See, see now you can, in hindsight, you can see how you can empathize with your son because you experienced that type of loss. And because you, because God got you through that type of loss, you were able to walk him through his healing and showing God through you and, and ministering um, to him through that. That's the moment that like Pastor Kim, I, she, when she says, you know, um, and I drew a lot of strength from when she said her father was dying and they were worshiping. That's mm -hmm. what I drew from. Mm -hmm. And I, what she says. When the devil tries to take you out, he tries to wear you mm -hmm. out. And um, I, I defeated Satan that day. You know, you know what's so powerful um, about everything you just said right there? Because, man, you had me tearing up. Um, mm -hmm. I know what's so powerful about that is that that's why we do Broken Branches. Because mm -hmm. someone needs to hear that tonight, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, a lot of times people don't think that they have gifts. And they don't know that... Just what you just talked about mm -hmm. right there is a, a gift for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Even though there was purpose out of your pain mm -hmm. that you just birthed, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, now know how to minister to someone who have lost someone, mm -hmm. you know? Are you, this is what the Bible, this is what I love about Christ. He says that Hebrews 4 and 15, he says that, he said that, I, that I'm a God of infirmities, mm -hmm. that I can feel your infirmities. There's nothing that he hasn't been through. And so Empathy. I think a lot of times with us in the body of Christ, we don't know how to feel each other's infirmities. Mm. See, we know how to feel our infirmities. But the best thing about God is he says that you're a servant. Jesus mm -hmm. said, I came here to be a servant. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here to be a taker. Mm -hmm. You know, I came to give, you know. And so I think especially in this day and time, you know, a lot of times we don't know. We want to be served. We don't want to be servants because the the old uh, attitude of the elders that I grew up with, it was always about being a servant. It mm -hmm. was always about helping. It was always about giving mm -hmm. instead of taking. And what can I do or what can that person do for me? But thank you for sharing that. That was just, mm -hmm. that was just so powerful. Yeah, that was, was. was very powerful. Yeah. So, so that's, whew, we yeah. got about seven minutes left. Um, mm -hmm. And again, we, we, who is God? You know, that's something to think about this year is uh, we all want prosperity. Mm -hmm. um, we will all want to live a life that's abundance, you know. But remember, God said, count the cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
See, sometimes when you ask for something like Abraham, the Bible said it was credit to Abraham. It was credit to him, his mm -hmm. righteousness, because mm -hmm. he believed in God, mm -hmm. not because he was a perfect person, mm -hmm. but because he believed in what God said. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all want, God, I want this. I want to go farther than you. I want to know you more. But often with that comes a sacrifice. Yeah. You know. So what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to do differently in 2021 that will get you closer and stronger? Because our goal is to get you off the milk and get you on the meat. And, and, and knowing that you have the power within you to triumph all devils, all principalities, because God has given us that authority. We have the authority to do, to do that. So what are you willing to sacrifice? If it's a couple hours of sleep, that was, that's, that's what I'm willing. Cause I'm an eight, nine hour one, but so. And even if you're on me, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, you know what now? if you're on me, you know, mm -hmm. you, you oh, stand yeah. trying to get them off milk. You know, one of the things I loved about my grandmother, I take this mm -hmm. with me. Um, in the summertime, she would chop wood. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Grandma, why are you out here, you know, in my own mind, I didn't say that to her. <laughs> but I was like, why are you, in my mind, like, why is she chopping wood? Mm -hmm. You know, and I would, you know, in, in, a, in a respectful way, like, Grandma, why are you chopping wood? And she said, well, boy, you know, the winter's coming. Mm -hmm. And I want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So I chop it now so that when the storm comes, yes. I ain't caught without mm -hmm. And it's the it's the same way with God sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you reap what you sow, mm -hmm. but you gotta sow some seed. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that one of the reasons that God um was so gracious to give me a kidney, because I've always sowed good seed. And I don't mean so much as giving in church. I'm talking about helping people, yeah. loving people, caring mm -hmm. for people, praying for people, mm -hmm. um just doing things, you know. And so I truly believe that if you're a giver, and, and um, Jesus Christ came here to give mostly. I believe in all prosperity. I've been mm -hmm. living a life of abundance. But um, two takers can't be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to be a giver. You know. So what are you willing to do to start your year off in 2021? To not only, you know, we all want to live a life of prosperity. But what are you doing to... Um, one day you will stand before God mm -hmm. to get closer to God. You know, what are you what are you doing to what kind of wood are you chopping? <laughs> That's what I'll say to you, because you never know when you may need God, not so much for money, but for your health mm -hmm. or for another friend. You know, I'll close it with this, Karen. One of the things I like um, and I can't remember right now off the top of my head, I can just remember it's chapter three. I'll think of it in a minute. But it was the three men who had. Um, went down through, um, it's in Mark chapter three, verse nine. They had went up, they had a friend that was sick, first of all, mm -hmm. right? And so they were really sick. Mm -hmm. He was really sick. So what they did was they was trying to bring him to Jesus, but the whole house was crowded, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they couldn't get in. So they start climbing on the top, right? Take the and they lowered him down. And you know what God said? He said this, he says, not so much. He says, he will be healed because of your yeah. faith. Yes. The Their faith, faith. The friend's yeah. faith. Not of the man's mm -hmm. faith. He said, you all believe so much if you got him here. See, that's what kind of friends you need in your life in 2021. Mm -hmm. You need some people in your life that by their faith, mm -hmm. not so much your faith. You need those type of friends that when you don't feel good or when you don't feel like praying or like Nikki was saying, I just lost all hope on Christ. And you need those type of friends that are encouragers, mm -hmm. you know, those type of friends that will pray with you when you don't <clears throat> feel like praying, those type of friends that will drag you to places that you don't want to go. And hold you accountable. And, and yeah, and, and the mm -hmm. ones that the Bible says that will wound you. That's yeah. what a real friend, a real friend doesn't tell you what you want to hear. They'll wound you. That's what love looks like. Yes. And that's, that's what God looks like. Yes. God is not going to give us something that we're not ready to receive. Yes. We may think we're ready to receive it, but he may not he's not gonna give us something that can cause us harm. Well baby girl, it's like giving mm -hmm. a sixteen year old a Maserati. Yes. And he's like, Mom, I want this Maserati, I want this car, I got my license, I'll pay for the insurance. Mm -hmm. But really? You gonna give him the Maserati? 
Yeah. Wrap it around because you already know you can't handle that speed, mm-hmm. and that's what God does uh, sometimes. You're not ready for that husband yet. Yeah, love, love. You're not ready us. for that wife mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you keep telling me you want a husband, but you don't prepare yourself to put to receive the husband that I got for you. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's a, Wait a what are you doing? You, Wait you have a, a list. You say I want a husband, and God said, "Well, what kind? Mm-hmm. How are you preparing yourself mm-hmm. to, for a husband?" Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, you... We have our list, you're asking, but they have theirs too. You're asking me for a wife, but you don't have a job. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a savings. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, That's you, a good stuff. you know, what are you doing mm-hmm. to receive this good thing that I got for you, as the Bible said? Him who finds a wife finds a good thing. Mm-hmm. You know? So we'll talk about that, but yes. we're going to go on a prayer. But thank thank you first, uh, again, for, for coming and on Broken Branches. We'll be doing Bible study every um, Monday night. And tomorrow mm-hmm. we are doing, um, what subject are we doing tomorrow? We'll have a discussion about bro- um, about blended families. About blended families. Blended families. Um, you know, that's, that's an area of struggle. You know, Marshall and I blended a family and a lot of people that I know blend family. So let's, you know, come back and have some real honest, open discussion about, about that. Well, blended families, that's the norm for today. You know, that's truly is a norm is how do you, you know, you got children and, you know, and you got to figure out how to make this work. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. well, you think you do, but God has you, but it's it's a good subject. Blended families. What are we going through? You know, discipline and, what do I believe in? Are we equally yoked? You know, mm-hmm. why am I having all these problems? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. So, so if you would pray us out, honey. yeah, Father God, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this new year, Lord. I thank you for those that were on here and those obedient that listen, Father God. Yes. And I pray over their families, Lord. Yes. Pra- Father God, I pray that you break all strongholds, Father thank God. God. Lord, I pray, I pray, Father God, that um, that you're a healer. They need healing tonight, Father God, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that um. We are here. We're still mm. here, Father God. Thank Lord. you, Lord. And I, I know we have to count the cost, Father God, Lord. I just ask that you continue to wrap us in your arms, Father God, Lord. I ask you to continue to just lead us and guide us and teach us, Father God, Lord. Make, draw us closer to you, Father God. Help us to increase our faith, Father God, mm-hmm. Lord. Help us to increase our um, our life and just get to know you, Father God, and not dating you, but to be married to you, yes, Father God. Jesus. And I just ask that you give those revelation on here, Father mm-hmm. God, as you order their footsteps, Father God. God, clean, consecrate our hearts, Father God, Lord. Um, Mm -hmm. Give us a clean heart within us, Father God, Lord. Open up the windows of heaven, Father God, Lord. And just give us all power, all authority, and all dominion, Father God. But teach us godly character on how to use it, Lord. So as we go tonight, Father God, and camp your angels around us, Father God. Keep your sword at our door. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a wonderful week. We love y'all. See you tomorrow. Love you. Love you. Bye. Talk to you next week. (laughs) Yes.